Hello and a very warm welcome to our worship this Sunday when we're celebrating Rogation Sunday. Now you're probably saying to yourself, what is Rogation Sunday? Well, it's one of the four agricultural festivals we celebrate in the church each year, uh, which are particularly important to those of us living in the countryside. The four agricultural festivals are Plough Sunday, Rogation Sunday, Lammas Tide, and finally the Harvest Festival, which I'm sure you will have heard of. Rogation Sunday is the day when the church has traditionally offered prayers for God's blessings on the fruits of the earth and the labours of those who produce our food for us. The word rogation comes from a Latin word, rogare, meaning to ask. And historically, the rogation days were a period of fasting and abstinence, asking for God's blessing on the crops for a plentiful harvest. Less of us today, of course, directly derive our livelihood from the production of food, but yet it's good to be reminded of our dependence on those who do and our responsibility also for the environment. Traditionally, a common feature of rogation days was the, the ceremony of beating the bounds, in which a procession of parishioners, uh, led by the minister and church wardens, would proceed around the boundary of their parish and pray for its protection in the forthcoming year. But of course, with churches now being joined together, it's no longer practical for us to walk the boundaries, as this would take us many, many hours to walk around Hellions Bumpstead, Steeple Bumpstead, Sturmer, Birdbrook, Ridgewell and Ashen. However, we'd normally leave our buildings during the service to go to a nearby field where we would pray for God's blessing on the soil so that the crops will be fruitful. And later on in this service, we will pray that prayer together. And this Sunday, as usual, there will be something for everyone during our worship. So if you've got other family members with you, gather them round and let's worship together. And we're going to begin with some responses. And I'd like to invite you to join with me to say the words in yellow type. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all that live in it. All the animals of the forest are the Lord's, and so are the cattle upon a thousand hills. The Lord makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for us to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth, wine that gladdens our hearts, oil to make our faces shine bread that sustains our hearts. The Lord makes springs pour water into the valleys. It flows between the mountains. The birds of the air nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. Our first hymn this morning, one really suitable for Rogation Sunday, is All Creatures of Our God and King. of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, Alleluia, Alleluia, the burning sun with golden beam, the silver moon with softer gleam.
unfoldest blessings on our way. Oh, praise Him. Let's now just take a few moments to say sorry to God for the wrong things that we do, say and think, and for the way that we don't take care of the beautiful planet that he's given us to look after. And so we say together, Lord, your works are wonderful. In wisdom you have made them all. Forgive us for the madness that abuses the earth for short-term ends, and give us the wisdom to cherish and share with daring and delight the abundant gifts of our fragile planet. Amen. And so may the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive your sins, and assure you of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now a special prayer for Rogation Sunday. We say together, Creator God, who sustains all you have made by the power of your Spirit, help us to rejoice in your bounty, to rely on your providence, and to ensure the fertility of the land as we work together with you to produce food for the body and delight for the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now it's our children's story time. And the story today is all about the unknown God. Long time ago, Paul tried to tell some people about the good news of Jesus, but many of them did not want to listen. 
Thank you so much for traveling with me to Athens, Paul said to his friends visiting from the city of Berea. These people had just recently learned about Jesus. They had followed Paul to Athens so he could teach them more as they traveled. Please send Silas and Timothy this way just as soon as you can. Paul waved goodbye as his friends left to go back home to Berea. Paul was lonely in Athens. There didn't seem to be a single person who knew about or believed in Jesus. Dear God, Paul may have prayed, please show me how to share your love with the people of this city. Beautiful statues and buildings and artwork surrounded the people of Athens. Expensive temples filled with all kinds of idols seemed to be everywhere. Athens was known as a city overflowing with intelligent people. But as Paul walked around, he felt sorry for them. They thought they knew so much, but they really didn't know the most important thing. They didn't know about Jesus. Paul soon began talking to people, and his words made people think and ask questions. They wanted to hear what he had to say about Jesus. One day, Someone invited Paul to speak at the Areopagus on top of Mars Hill. The Areopagus was a special place where philosophers met to talk and listen to the latest ideas. Such men were considered to be very intelligent and wise. It was an honor to be invited to speak there. Friends, Paul began, I can see that you are very religious. Everywhere I look, I see statues and altars to different gods. On one statue, I notice the words, To an unknown God. I'm here today to tell you about Him. The true God of heaven made the world and everything in it. It is God in heaven who gives life and breath to everyone. As he continued speaking, many of the people listened carefully. Then Paul told them about the resurrection of Jesus. Some of the people said, You're crazy. This is just a bunch of nonsense. But there were a few who said, We want to hear more. Not very many people in the city of Athens believed in Jesus. They thought their own wisdom was better than God's wisdom. But there were some who became Christians. Dionysius, an important man in the city government, and a woman named Damaris chose to follow Jesus. Paul was able to talk boldly to the intelligent people of Athens because he knew God himself. What can you do to get to know Jesus better? Do you really want to know Jesus so you can tell others about him? For our children's song this morning, uh, we're sticking with our rural theme and the song is a combination of two actually. The first one is called Let's Make God Happy and the second one, I want to be a blooming tree.
Now Jill is going to bring us our Bible reading. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you're ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth, and doesn't live in temples built by human hands. And he's not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations, so that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he's not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we shouldn't think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn together is Great is Thy Faithfulness, after which Teresa is going to bring today's message to us. I see all I 
God then? I wonder what your first response would be. Some would of course be sure of their answer straight away and declare him as their heavenly father who they trust implicitly and who they know loves them unconditionally. Some would answer that they don't believe there is a God. But many I believe may be taken aback a little and perhaps struggle to give a straight answer. Why? Because if they were to be honest, they would not really know what God meant to them. They would metaphorically be standing at a crossroads, at a point where a decision was needed to be made, but perhaps a little bit perplexed with the options that were in front of them. Some would acknowledge and believe there is a God, but not quite sure what to do with that fact. Some would want to acknowledge there is a God, but just not be able to bring themselves to that point of belief. Others would again want to believe there is a God, but know they needed first a sense of a, a hole, a something missing in their life to be filled before they felt they could move forward. A bit like the jigsaw puzzles that many of us have been doing whilst in lockdown and just that one piece missing, that hole in the middle. Perhaps today is a good day to stop and honestly take a few minutes to think about what your answer would be if someone asked you. What do you think about God then? Which of these scenarios would you associate most with? Well, if someone asked me what I thought about God, um, I would have to say that I believe God is love. A simple answer. Yes, I know. But... I know that God loves me and I also believe he loves you as well. And that's why I can stand here and say whatever honest answer you might give as to what you think about God. Well, I think that's OK. Because God still loves you. He would prefer you to be honest, I believe, and, and have these questions, because the more you question, the more you open yourselves up to that opportunity to learn more about that unconditional love that he has for you. Now, I know we all like to think we're a little bit special and a little bit unique, don't we? But I'm afraid to say that as you stand at a crossroads thinking about your answer, I'm afraid that doesn't make you unique. You are very normal, not just for someone living in this epidemic during 2020, but normal because people have for all of history had questions about God, about what does he mean to me? Standing at their own crossroads and wrestling with that question, what do I think about God? I don't believe that God minds us wrestling with such questions because he knows our efforts to understand will help us to grow and to love him more. I'm sure many of you know that a butterfly has to struggle to push its way out of its cocoon so that fluid can be moved from its body to its wings to enable it to fly. The butterfly's struggle means it can fly. Our questions and our doubtings can lead us to understanding God 
and knowing that we are unconditionally loved by him. As we think about our Bible reading from Acts today, we can see that Paul is addressing a group of people, many of whom appear to be standing metaphorically at their crossroads. They believe they should be worshipping something, but they're not sure who or what. Hence, we read that they had actually made altars to an unknown God. An attempt, I think, rather to cover all of their bases. But rather than condemning them for this, let's view them this morning as I believe God does. God would see them as people who want to worship. They just need some guidance. And Paul, he met them where they were and then took them on with that guidance about who God was for him, a God who loved him. It's interesting because Luke, who wrote this passage, was a doctor and like many doctors believed in a holistic treatment for people. We still this, see this still today, don't we? As doctors treating their patients with the COVID virus report that they're so saddened when they feel that their PPE, so vital of course, but it, it kind of creates a barrier between themselves and their patients. They know the power of a smile and that smile is sometimes hidden behind their mask. They know the power of physical touch, something that perhaps they're not allowed to give now. Luke was a person of compassion and so he wanted to relay the actions of Paul in a sympathetic way, which helped others to know of the compassion and love that God has for everyone. He tells us that Paul, who used to be a rabbi himself, found himself now in Athens, the Greek centre of culture. Now, this wasn't at all daunting for Paul. Uh, he was well used to mixing with and discussing important matters of state with learned men. He was quickly invited to address the council after they'd heard that they were starting to talk to people out on the streets about their altars and their idols. I can just imagine in that council, the first question that was put to him at the Council of Philosophers, it might have gone something like this. Paul, what do you think about God then? Paul probably rubbed his hands together in glee at this point, thinking, great, now is my opportunity to help these people, to guide these people, help them to know that God loves them. And he made four points as he helped them in this way. And the first was based on the fact that God created the world and everything in it. They had been building temples for their gods, but Paul said, stop. You've got this the wrong way round. God has created a place for you. He has given you life and breath. He has marked out your boundaries and named you as his offspring. He is the creator God whom you can worship and give thanks to. Interestingly, you know that today we are celebrating Rogation Sunday. It's a time to give thanks for God's creation, but also a time to remember that the Latin word from which this comes is rogare, and that means to ask. The people in Athens asked to know more about the God whom Paul believed in. And what did Paul do? He immediately pointed them towards the creation and his creator God. We have so much to give thanks for to God for in his creation gift to us all. And I would say, especially at this time of lockdown, who I truly believe people would have tr struggled so much more if we'd not been blessed with this beautiful weather. And for us here, the beautiful countryside that we see all around us. The second point Paul made when answering there, what is your God all about then? was to tell them that the God he believed in was always worthy to be named and worshipped appropriately. Paul explained to them that when they name an altar to an unknown God, it means they're keeping their options so open, it 
can only mean they don't really know who they are worshipping. But again, we can say that we are not to condemn this, but rather we are to see these people standing at a crossroads, whereas yet they have to make their decision. Paul explains that the God he believes in is the one for whom he lives and moves and has his very being. In other words, rather than being unknown, God to Paul means literally everything. As they continued to question Paul, the third point he was able to explain was that whereas they thought God was lost, Paul taught them that it was themselves that were lost to God. This turned their thinking around completely. They were shown that God was there and had always been there, but perhaps they couldn't see him because they were facing the wrong way. Again, we can use our analogy of standing at a crossroads. They were looking in the wrong direction. Finally, Paul told them, and indeed tells us today, that his God is a God of new beginnings. It doesn't matter what you've been doing. It doesn't matter if you've taken the wrong path. It doesn't matter if up to now you've worshipped other things. What matters is you now turn to God and put him first. There's a saying that explains that as we turn to God, he takes all of our past sins and our bad decisions and he throws them in the deepest of oceans. And then just to make his point, he puts up a no fishing sign. They're gone. They're forgotten. They do not need to be revisited. He wants us all to have a new start, a new beginning. That's what he promises us. Paul knows that God, through the death of his son Jesus, removed all barriers for us as he took on our sins and died on that cross so that we can all access his unconditional love. We can all have a true and fulfilled life with meaning, with that jigsaw shaped hole that we spoke about earlier being filled with God's love. The jigsaw is complete. Our life is complete. So if you are standing at a crossroads currently, you're not standing at the wrong place, but you are in exactly the right place. If these current very difficult situations we find ourselves in as we live through this epidemic have made you think on the meaning of life more than you normally do, then you're in the right place. If you are looking for that hole inside you to be filled, but not quite sure what to fill it with, you're in the right place. If you think God is unapproachable and too distant, but you really wish he wasn't, you're standing at the right place. Wherever you are, you are in the right place. Because God knows you wherever you are and he loves you. All of us can decide to turn to God, to look in his direction and take our next step forward in faith to know more about his love for us. As our Bible reading said in verse 27, God did all of this so that we would seek him and reach out to him as he is not far away from any of us. God did all of this so that we would seek him and reach out to him as he is not far away from any of us. So on this Rogation Sunday, as we are surrounded by the beauty in nature, how would you answer that question? What do you think about God? Shall we pray? God of love, we acknowledge we so often stand at a crossroads and we want to turn to you and follow you. Help us to be brave and turn our backs on anything that does not honour you. Teach us how to worship you and open our eyes to the gifts that you have given us in nature and life itself. We thank you that you are a God of new beginnings. 
Help us to receive this gift and let us be blessed by the love that you send to surround us all. Amen. If you want to talk to any of our team about what you've heard today, please don't hesitate to contact us. And remember, there's the opportunity to do the Alpha course online. You know, this course is primarily aimed at all of these big questions. Who is God? Who is Jesus? What does his death mean for me today? It's good to share in a discussion and voice your questions to help us move that next step on, to perhaps meet us at that crossroads and show us the way that we should be going. And so let's respond by declaring our faith together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now at this point in a Rogation Sunday service, we would probably wander out of church and go uh, to a nearby field and say a prayer to ask God to bless the soil so that the crops will grow well. Now obviously we're not together so we can't do that but what we're going to do is we're going to say a prayer together asking God to bless the soil uh, and the soil all around us, the soil in our fields and in our gardens and then once we've finished worshipping together perhaps you can go for your daily exercise and as you go through the fields or past the fields, ask God to bless that soil so that the crops will be fruitful. And so let us pray together. O Creator God, maker of all that is, we offer to you this soil. We praise you for this marvellous and intricate creation. Help us to regard this humble soil with reverence and respect as your chosen means of feeding and providing for us. Bless this soil and all the soil around us, the soil in our fields and gardens, the soil on the hills and in the woodlands, so that the whole earth gives glory to you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Judy is going to come and lead us in our prayers. Rogation Sunday is a time for reminding all of us where our food comes from. To give thanks for the fact that we have enough to eat. And also to remember those who rely on the land for their livelihood. Rogation Sunday is a reminder of how close to home the food chain really starts. So shall we pray? We learn from the Holy Scripture that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and caused the sun to shine and the rain to fall, the plants to grow and the earth to give forth its increase. God is the giver of life in the seed and in the soil. We give thanks for all farmers, growers and fishermen and all who work in agriculture to provide us with our food. At this difficult time, we especially pray for dairy farmers whose produce is being poured away and wasted because cafes, coffee bars and restaurants are closed because of the virus. Give them strength to carry on until better times return and pray that financial help is given to help them survive the lockdown. 
loving Lord, the eternal fountain and giver of life. We give thanks that we again behold on every side the awakening of nature in answer to your call to arise from winter's sleep. And you cheer our spirits with freshening grass, budding trees and unfolding plants. Almighty God, creator and sustainer of heaven and earth, nourish, protect and bless the seed which people have sown in hope, so that by your good providence and bountiful giving, it may bring forth fruit in due season and be gathered with thanksgiving to satisfy the needs of your people. Lord God, by your providence alone, we receive the fruits of the earth. In your mercy, send us such weather that our fields may bring forth abundantly, and that at the time of harvest, we may take of your gifts for the good of all, and give thanks to you with gladness. We ask you to help all custodians of the countryside to be good stewards of the land so it may be enjoyed by generations to come. Amen. And now let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. It's now time for our final hymn and um, given that this service has been marking one of our four main agricultural festivals, any ideas what the final hymn might be? Well, if you said, well it has to be we plough the fields and scatter, you're absolutely right. So let's sing together.
Just before our closing prayers, I'd like to thank you once again for being with us and worshipping with us again today. I hope you've enjoyed uh, learning about Rogation Sunday. And um, after the final prayers, I'm going to show you a music video, which is called The UK Blessing, uh, which has been released during this time of lockdown. And it's an absolutely inspirational piece of music drawing people together from churches all over the country. And then after that, uh, there'll be the usual screen, which has all the contact details showing you how you can keep in touch. But until we meet again, I pray that you have a good week. And now our closing prayers. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth. Pour his blessing upon all things created and upon his children, that we may use his gifts to God's glory and the welfare of all peoples. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from heaven this isn't second guessing we know that we are protected may the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message grace and favors in your nature in your essence may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand Children, in the 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 children, in